This screencast builds on screencast one where we created a folder called My Family History in your Documents folder. If you haven't done that yet, I encourage you to go do that and then come back to this one. Okay, let's get started by opening a Finder window. We'll do that by clicking the little smiley face guy down here one time. That'll open up a Finder window pointing to my home directory. Make sure you're in this column view. This will be the most convenient way to look at what we're doing in this. If you have one of these other views selected, simply click on the column view button here. It'll get turned dark like that when it's selected. If you followed along in Screencast 1, you've got a folder here for, your, for this called My Family History. You can simply click on that to go there. If you didn't put one in your sidebar and put one down in your dock instead, or chose not to do either one, you can simply click on your Documents folder and then find My Family History folder within that and double click. So, within this folder we're going to want to create a new one for files about people. So what I'm going to do is, since I've got My Family History folder selected, I can click on the menu File and then New Folder. And that'll create a new folder within the My Family History folder. It's highlighted light blue, meaning I can type to replace the uh, title, untitled folder. And I want to call this Surnames. And press Enter. So now we've got the folder here for surnames, and we want to create a folder under that for each surname. So as in genealogy, they tell you to start with yourself. That's what I'll do. So I'm going to create a new folder. File, new folder, and I'm going to put in my surname. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to create folders for each person having that surname. So I'm going to stop using the file, uh, the file on the menu to create these new folders. I'm just going to use this command key, shift command N, to create them from now on. So this first one, since I'm starting with myself, I type in my last name, my first name, and my middle name. And then I, I uh, add the birth year, a hyphen, and the death year as a suffix to this folder name. So I was born in 1963, and I haven't died yet. So what I do for that is type living. Okay, I'm going to stretch this column out a little bit so we can see longer file names. It's got this little double bar down here. If you click on that and drag it to the side, it will uh, lengthen this, this one pane of this column view, making it easier for us to see things. So this shows you the basic structure that I use. Person's last name, first name, middle name, birth year if it's known, hyphen, death year if it's known, living if they're currently living. I'm going to show you some more examples just to show you some different ways that I handle that format. So I'm going to select the say or surname folder again because I want to make sure I'm creating folders in that folder. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut shift command N. So that swings over and gives me another untitled folder. I want This time I want to add one for my father. Sayer Alfred Leroy and Alfred Leroy Sayer was born in 1927 and he died in 1979. So there you can see what a folder looks like that has a, a for a deceased person. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Sayer folder and I'm going to create another folder and this one is going to be for my grandfather. His name was John Henry. And John Henry Sayer, my grandfather, was born in 1889, and he passed away in 1965. A good long life. Now, I want to show you a couple of examples of what this would look like if I didn't know one of these, um, one of these years. So I'm going to just um, change these so you can see it would look like that if I did not know what the death year was. Simply would have the birth year 
and then the hyphen and nothing after it. So all I do is, is leave the hyphen there and remove whatever date it is that I don't know. So if I don't know one's, someone's birth and death year, it would simply look like this. And obviously, if I know their death year but not their birth year, it would be like this. I also want to show you this. Let's, let's presume for a, for a moment that I didn't know with certainty John Henry's Sayers birth year and I wanted to use an approximate date. All that I would do is type ABT and then the year. So you can do the similar thing. I'm going to take that out since I do know that he was actually born in 1889. Okay, so let me add a couple more here to show you other special formats. So I want to add one for my grandmother. And this is how I do maiden names. So I put the maiden name in parentheses um, and her Abby Cora. Dussel was her maiden name, and she became Abby Cora Sayer. So this is how I display that. And Abby Cora was born in 1895, and she passed away also in 1965. And then one other thing I want to show you, um, because it explains why I put the birth years on there. It may not be immediately apparent, but I have a cousin who is named after my grandfather, so his name is John Henry Sayer as well. And if I had not been using the years, I would have two folders in here, and I would have to differentiate which one was which. I found the years to be the most obvious way. So my cousin, thankfully, is still alive. He was born in 1952, and he's living, so I'll mark it that way. Oops, there. Okay. Um, one other thing that I want to show you here is uh, one of the things that I'll, that I'll do, normally I don't do it every time, but if I find that I have files about a Sayer name or another surname um, that I'm researching, and I'm not quite sure that they belong to this line, but I want to keep a copy of it just in case, I'll, make, I'll create, an actual, uh, create another folder within the surname folder that's just called Maybe Related. And I'll just stick those files in there. Um, one of the things, one of the little tricks that I'll share with you here, since you'll notice that the finder's been alphabetizing these, and if you're working with a surname that that with a first letter of the surname that comes in the alphabet before M, they'll sort before maybe related. And if you want to keep maybe related at the top every time, you can just simply put a punctuation mark, something like that, in the front because those will sort first. So I like to put an exclamation point. Um, that way, that keeps maybe related near the top, or at the top, and um, then I don't have to go searching through the surname fo uh, folders to find that maybe related folder.